Hi, Rick. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for wow. joining us. The muscular Dude. dove herself. <laughs> yes. Listen, I don't think anyone has ever called me that. I was so... <laughs> I enjoyed that review so much. Like I kept on, uh, I mean, amongst my uh, entire family, we've all seen it and we've re-seen it. Uh, and uh, we're just like, those words are just unique. <laughs> I don't think any. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the person who wrote that description of the song, <laughs> we kept on bullying him. We kept on bullying him for that inimitable Imitable, and, yeah. Um, <laughs> said, That's awesome. This is a new vocabulary introduced to the world. Yeah. Uh, yes. oh, long yes. for, long for gone. <laughs> he is famous for doing things that we call Corbinization. So I yeah. guess that could qualify in a different kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, <laughs> thank you so much for uh, actually joining us. We are um, big admirers of yours. We've heard, it feels like, a million songs of yours we've seen you well we've seen you we've heard your voice and it seems like a million movies that we've seen now uh you are the one and only muscular dove uh for <laughs> for always and forever i think you should put that on cards uh so thank you so yes. much for for coming on we really appreciate that it's my pleasure. I really uh, have seen a lot of your uh, reviews and interviews. You guys are so detailed and so hilarious at the same time. that It's very entertaining. I really enjoy watching your stuff. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, well, I, uh, first and foremost, we want to talk about your, your new single that came out with your brother, uh, which obviously, as you know, we, we, we absolutely adored and we thought it was phenomenal. So how did you first come up with that that idea that video with your brother uh what how'd the whole process come about uh so um i don't know what you guys were doing in the lockdown i was very bored i was not uh doing yeah. my uh my usual uh you know volume of work whether it's travel concerts and recordings for films and other stuff uh -huh. so I was feeling very uh, uninspired and bored at home and I felt like doing something that just will give me instant dose of joy so that's why I did Angna More the song that you heard uh, with my brother and my brother is like uh, so we have a seven year old gap okay we, we uh, so I kind of bully him a little bit you know sometimes we do speak about music a lot he he's a very sincere musician but I say he you know, yeah, we should be doing something that should really, uh, you know, give some excitement in our lives. And he says, yeah, whatever you say. So Didi is sister in Hindi, right? So he said, Didi, whatever you say, we'll do it. He's a very good boy. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so uh, he, he said, um, you don't even think twice before what kind of music we, we need to do. Whatever comes to mind right now, just let's record it. And... Um, Let's not think about um, what genre this is, whether it's a commercial kind of a track or not, because it matters right now a lot, right? Because um, everything is dictated by numbers and um, how many, what kind of genre people are listening to, what's the in thing. But I think we kind of really did not follow any rule. And uh, I did the song as a for my love for classical music. Uh, so it's not a very hardcore Indian classical music uh, piece, but it's inspired by it. So it's a very, it's a very flowy composition uh, where I am able to do a, a lot of singing, uh, technical things also, but not keeping it very heavy. Uh, and the arrangements and the production was very important for it to become very uh, unique because I uh, didn't want it to be, become um you know something cliched because fusion is the term when it comes to indian uh you know classical mixing with western style of arrangements mm -hmm. i didn't want it to become a fusion song it it had to be a very unique uh, experience so that's how we did it <laughs> and uh, i'm glad somebody could 
add his uh, influences mm-hmm. his musical style to enhance it in a different way and people liked it i'm glad mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> very much uh and you uh, it's but you have said that this song connected you um back to your your roots how how so is that and is that an accurate description about your connection with the song it brought you back to your roots yeah yeah because uh see i had learned uh, classical music but i won't say i'm an exponent in it i am not a full fledged classical music performer um i i i have a certain inclination towards this kind of music whenever i sit and sing something or i listen to i choose to listen to music i'll end up listening to you know badi gulam ali khan sahab the the big uh, names of in classical music and the ragas or something that gives me instant love and happiness in that moment um so i think i'm drawn towards it and that's my first love um but i am not uh, a full fledged classical performer i use my uh, little bit knowledge whatever i have and the experiences and having l- listened to the greats uh, all of those influences i bring in my singing uh, but i won't call it a purest way of uh, uh, putting classical music in my technique of singing so uh, yeah i would say i was drawn to this kind of music because in films in the typical you know uh, format of singing i won't get too many opportunities like this so sure. uh, Yeah. you know so because this was an independent project i could do something that gave me happiness mm-hmm. <laughs> in that moment well was it any different or challenging to do all this during a pandemic or what was it was it any different process uh during the whole uh covid going on oh yeah because everything was virtual mm-hmm. like this we were on mm-hmm. skype or video calls and uh there are so many different things that have come up in this kind of a uh challenging time so i could hear the audio like a very good quality audio over the uh, internet uh and uh, jam with my brother on many things even recording the other musicians we were all doing it virtually like this mm. so uh i learned a lot of technical things in this <laughs> in this period <laughs> to be honest <laughs> I, I never thought I could operate all these softwares, and I'm I'm very good at this now. I think I can call myself an expert. <laughs> <laughs> well, do, are you pleased with the fact that here you were, really? I mean, um, on the one hand, you're you're definitely not someone that can be put into a a box. You're very versatile, but this was a very personal project for you. That's very different from some of the things you've done. Are you happy it's being very well received not just by us but it's being very well received that must be really pleasing for you Yeah I actually did not think much uh, about how this will be received what will people say I I honestly did it out of uh, just pure love for wanting to do something of this sort and then when I put it out I think I think because the audience is also were probably waiting to hear something like this uh not just from um, the the music industry but me because people know that uh that i have a certain you know a love for semi classical classical music and i have done a bit of this here and there but this was a very different presentation so i honestly did not know how this would have been received but it's very encouraging to see the kind of comments and the love that has been pouring in for this so this makes me a uh, feel very confident that i can keep going on this path and uh, not worry much about uh, uh, you know what is expected of me uh, i think i i think uh, the audience is really want an artist to really express uh, what's in that in their heart in that year or in that month or in that period of their life or in that phase i have been in this industry for probably more than 20 years mm. i've done a lot of uh, different kind of music but it's now time for me to really explore what i really need to or want to do now mm-hmm. <laughs> absolutely and um so you've i believe sang in almost 19 different languages i think is what i saw which is astounding um how cuz from c- coming from an 
an American uh, who just speaks English and just a tiny bit of slang Spanish. Um, that's that seems very impressive to me. So how difficult is it? And I know you've said that, you know music has no language, but you're still singing in a completely different language. So it's it's still crazy impressive. So how difficult is it to sing as beautifully as you do and get the I guess the articulations correct in a, a language that you're not fluent in? Um, yeah, you know, this is the beauty of our country, India, because okay. uh, we are a country of so many languages mm -hmm. and uh, different cultures and uh, traditions and cuisines and so mm -hmm. many different things, you know. Um, I feel very fortunate that I, I have, see, I'm, um, I speak Bengali at home. My mm -hmm. mother tongue is Bengali. Our national language is Hindi. And uh, we all speak pretty much everyone speaks English. Mm -hmm. uh, so three languages we, we have to speak, yeah. you know. Uh, <laughs> so this is given. Um, but, uh, you know, there are these languages which uh, um, are very different from what I speak, like Tamil, Telugu, uh, Malayalam, Kannada, especially the South Indian languages are very different from um, the main language that I have learned or I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. Because that's... So Hindi, Bengali are, are based out of Sanskrit. The, mm -hmm. the root language is Sanskrit. And Tamil is a completely different language. You know, it's a very old language. It's older than Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so to be honest, I don't understand these languages. So when I am singing these songs, I probably I am not sure what I'm singing. What are these words? To me, uh, most of the time, uh, these are sounds and I have to, uh, you know, get the sound and the pronunciation correct hmm. and also uh, express the song and with all emotions and the, of course, the musical part is there. But uh, because our film music and our, you know, generally uh, all music it has to be all about emotion mm -hmm. apart from the mm -hmm. musical nuances. So it definitely gives me uh, a little challenge, but I somehow have figured out my tr tricks into figuring out how to you know, do it best. Uh, I take the help of my composers and the person who has written the lyrics of the song to give me the actual pronunciation, the diction, the, uh, the phonetics of it. I, I make very precise notes on my notebook. And once I've learned it, so in those 10 minutes of learning a song, I'm a very good student. <laughs> I listen to every, every bit of what has been spoken, even if I'm joking around and if I'm like having fun, but my ears are very, uh, you know, uh, very alert about every information that has been given to me. And once I'm on the mic, I take all the information in front of me and I convert it <laughs> into a song. Into a muscular dove. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, I was trying and, to find. You know, we were having this internal joke because I, I just told my brother I've never been, never been called a muscular <laughs> dove in my life. So I was trying to find an emoticon or an image on the internet if there is a is a dove which is muscular. <laughs> muscular. <laughs> I, there, there is not. There is not a single image of a dove which is muscular. So. You and you can create one. You, you created the butterflies. You could create one that's yeah. unique for you. Absolutely. The next music yeah. video, I expect some credit. It's going to be a muscular dove music video. It's going to be. Yes, it's going to be beautiful. Next one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I, I read I read somewhere speaking about the way that you go about learning, for example, say Tamil, which is not Sanskrit or originated, which Hindi and Bengali are. That when you're wanting to understand exactly what you're saying that you'll do your notation in Hindi. Is that is that correct? Yeah. I yeah. feel Hindi is a very, uh, uh, ph uh, phonetically, it's very proper. Uh, it's very close to what you want to enunciate and pronounce. So it's very easy for me to, so the Hindi script is actually called the Devnagri script. So uh, you can write a lot of different sounds and vowels and the, uh, the way. And then, of course, I've made some of my... Um, I've come up with some extra uh, script uh, additives, <laughs> which only I know what it means. <laughs> so huh? I do have my own little, you know, notations. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, yeah. what what language do you would you say is the most difficult to sing in that yet obviously you're not fluent in? 
there are lots of them um mm. i think uh, having um, done so much uh, work in all the four south indian languages so all the mm. four are difficult to be honest mm. but malayalam especially is very difficult because Fast. there are these uh, various uh, levels of even the l there is l there is l there is r so uh, <laughs> you know there are these levels of <laughs> saying the same uh, alphabet differently depending on what the word is and how it's coming and it's very complicated but uh, i think i i have now attuned myself a little bit so i now can predict that if this is the word it has to be pronounced like that so i think mm. somewhere i'm learning slowly learning i think Good. this is uh, a slow process yeah. but i'm getting there <laughs> Well, it's it's encouraging to me to hear you say that there's some things that are difficult with the the l and the different sounds because I've I've tried to begin to learn some Hindi and I'm also uh, Ami Bangla Shikchi. Um, Achha. So. <laughs> Tarun Bepar, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I I there are so many um, sounds. in both hindi and bengali as well as all the other indian languages that we don't even make in yeah. in in english yeah so it's encouraging to know there's so many languages that are challenging for you as well yeah um oh yeah do you <laughs> do you find we've noticed something in our exposure to now really in the past 2 years we've been fully immersed into indian artistry in ways we had no idea it existed and i what we've discovered and you can affirm this is that musicians in particular singers in particular that are coming out of indian artistry tend to have a much broader and bigger range of music as well as training it seems like training whether it's hindustani classical music or it's carnatic or it's just the basics of understanding modality and raga and everything else is is training essential for singers and musicians in indian music yeah i think uh... in my case it definitely has helped uh because i feel uh, learning classical music whether for a western singer if it's a western classical or for a jazz art- artist there is some other kind of training for indian music indian classical music is definitely the first step towards learning a language so it helps you uh, this is the perfect musical language which you can then use for your life to uh, improvise execute ideas uh, so many different applications of that thing so it uh, helps you create it helps you um, you know take a certain piece of music to a different level um, mm. so i feel for me execution of notes and how i can i can approach a note a certain way i can approach it in 300 different ways because i have i've kind of heard the masters of in classical music i won't say that i've learned it very thoroughly but i've heard a lot and for me learning has been mostly through my ears mm. and uh, even even the bigger artists i i i take them in front of me as uh, you know benchmarks and institutions and i i learn a lot from just every day listening to the same song and discovering something new in it how how like for me lata mangeshkar is one of the most prolific uh, indian female artist or in an artist to me uh, honest her dynamic her dynamics and her presentation of words her use of uh, emotions in the right place so i have i have learned a lot of things from her and many other artists even classical artists and i use those very um, you know wherever needed without even thinking now uh, how i need to uh, use those techniques in my singing so i feel in classical learning a classical uh, you know course is very important for uh, any any singer to have a great foundation yeah <clears throat> and this is just a uh, i'm curious here um I'm not a singer. Rick is a singer and a musician and all that kind of stuff. But I know in Western there whenever singers or musical theater I suppose are preparing, they have warm-ups. Um mm. but I'm sure they're different for Indian. Obviously there's the rags and and all all that kind of stuff. So what are what are the you're like if you're going into the uh, a studio to record something for a film, what are some warm-ups that you would normally do to get your voice ready? 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <And it's fucked> <laughs> <up>. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Corbin, so I'm sorry to disappoint to many of my <laughs> listeners and you that I do not have a regime. Mm. I honestly do not do too much <laughs> going mm. before uh, on, on the that's, mic because uh, that's, that's really truth. okay. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. Because, yeah. you know, people really expect that I'm probably doing acrobatics in my singing before uh-huh. I'm going on the stage or going, doing my scales and uh, opening my voice. I, I do a very little bit of it. Uh-huh. So uh, even if it's uh, just, you know, because being a recording artist uh-huh. and being a performer are two different things. Yeah. Uh, so when uh, when I'm doing my concerts, when I'm going for a, for a live gig, I really have to, of course, once do the whole warm up uh, and the sound check and everything to make sure that I'm ready to belt out because the projection of my work on stage is very different from what I'm doing on the mic in a recording studio. Mm-hmm. So I, I uh, honestly feel when I wake up in the morning, I really know how, what is my situation that day. Mm-hmm. How is my voice sounding? Is it tired? Is it exhausted? Is it uh, is it well? Is it mm-hmm. mus- feeling muscular? <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> really, honestly. Uh, so I wake up and I know that, okay, today if I have to record a couple of songs, mm-hmm. uh, I need to uh, make sure that my my octaves are not working in that certain... My, my voice is not... The tone is not perfect today. Uh, I, I can find... Uh, flaws in my timber that day that okay that particular frequency I can't hear today well in my vocals so I will probably do a warm up to you know uh, mm. just to initiate or just fire up that frequency or uh, do some scales to open up my octaves and uh, so it's very you know day to day situation yeah. and I think over the time I've tried to understand how my voice works how my body works how uh, well um, also your mental state is also very important if i'm very stressed out with 100 different things i may not be able to do that music at all i have to be in that state of mind uh, so i have to, i have learned how to shut off those switches which uh, might give me you know will distract me from the actual emotion of those songs so mm-hmm. there are a lot of th- processes which are very now impersonal and Maybe not everyone can use these tricks, but it has worked for me. Yeah. Do you have a preference? And it may change from venue to venue or production production. Uh, but do you have a preference to performing in a studio when you're doing vocals for a motion picture versus when you're performing live in front of an audience? Do you prefer one over the other? No, it's it's two different, completely two different ball game. Like it's yeah. amazing. To have that transition uh, from being in a isolated studio, soundproof, and it's—I feel a studio is a like a temple, temple of creation. You are, you are in your uh, most. Uh, I feel I am. I'm in my most spiritual uh, state in that moment, where because we, I'm able to create with my composer and songwriters uh, something which was not heard before, something which was. Out of nowhere, a song is born, right? So I think, mm. uh, and then going on the on the on the mic and you know, singing it, and uh, some days we just are able to hit some extraordinary notes. Some days are just they fall flat. I mean, it's really about you can't predict, but um, whatever gets created in that moment in that day is now uh, you know printed for eternity it's going to be there as a record forever so uh, mm-hmm. basically we are able to capture that moment in sound uh, as as a part of history so um, that's incredible for me mm-hmm. of course then taking that song and maybe once people have heard it and taking a, a, that song in a concert and performing it live is a different feeling because then um, of course, the performance is also very different from the original song because I am actually probably doing it very differently when I'm on the stage and doing improvisations, which I didn't feel like doing it while I was recording it. Mm-hmm. Or the energies of the audiences, the singing and the cheers and the, the orchestration and the arrangement of the songs. 
it's a different thing mm-hmm. uh, it can't be compared i love both <laughs> mm-hmm. and what's uh how cuz obviously we're very familiar with playback singers now but here in in hollywood essentially those playback singers aren't really a thing very much anymore um here anymore but what's the whole process like in terms of um how how far ahead do you guys record that before you're they're start they're ready to start filming that song in the movie like in baji ramastani when topeka was about to do the thing in the gold room uh and like how how far in advance is that done and are you in the room when she's pretending to have your voice (laughs) (laughs) that's a good one um well no see the the song is made first yeah Uh, um and uh, to be honest there are not very few films and film uh, directors who can do the that kind of music or create those kind of big sets and have mm-hmm. a lip sync moment of the actress i think things are changing in our films now anyway uh, but having said that our essential bollywood song would be about if i if i'm a female voice an actress will be lip syncing on on my vocals and mm-hmm. the song is made beforehand so the song is created then it goes for uh, choreography if there is some dance uh, mm-hmm. involved and then of course there's a when it sanjali labhansali he thinks very differently he's one of the very few people who um, does his music like a musical mm-hmm. and it gives it a surreal larger than life kind of an experience for our audiences um uh, so that there is so much detailing that goes in in the shot division how the actress will um what h- her f- facial feature uh, facial expression would be in that particular note uh, there are so many nuances to even our dance form actually uh, it also comes from the indian classical uh, dance uh, classical uh, art form which now has been converted into bollywood bollywood has every different genre uh which is mishmashed and now it's something unique yeah but uh so i think when an actress is lip syncing the song she really has to even for me when i'm i'm singing the song i really have to imagine if this is dipika padukone singing and i know her face now i have sung many songs for her i know how she will enunciate this particular line how she will mm. probably you know express with her uh you know i i know how her face moves wow. in so certain do you, words do you normally know like who the actress is you're going to be singing for beforehand most of the times yes okay. especially in the bigger cast bigger production films many other times what happens is we have done the song and it was then used for some other film you know <laughs> so wow. it, it, you know it has happened that way also but uh most of the times so on the bigger gotcha. hits that you have seen of me are always uh, very well planned very well choreographed yeah. uh, pieces only very occasionally when uh, to be honest because i do a lot of regional songs also so there is a lot of work happening in different languages so sometimes if i'm very late in the process to deliver my vocals uh, just before the release uh, i i didn't have say a time when they were sh- about to shoot the song so uh, many a times they have shot it on somebody's voice like a, as as a scratch vocals and then i am stuck with the <laughs> with mm. the way uh, that song is already shot oh. now i have to match up to to uh, to Whoa. something that is already done and then find my ways to improvise on it and do my thing that sometimes that has also happened <laughs> Mm. Well you you said something a moment ago that's very telling about you. Um I'm I'm a big advocate of lip syncing is a much underappreciated art form. It's not an easy thing to do. And I know most actors who are having to lip sync are doing everything they can to match the mouth to the sounds they're hearing. You a moment ago said that you will actually take into consideration what you know the actress is typically going to do you get to know them well enough and you actually go about phrasing your music in such a way that it will be complementary to what you know they will do with their enunciations yeah uh yeah that i really keep in mind uh because uh i i feel sometimes when you see lip sync 
lip synced music can really throw off people if it's not done well mm-hmm. you know when Absolutely. you're watching someone on screen and you suddenly know that's not her voice and it's not even sounding right with her the tone is not sounding right with her face or the way she's mm-hmm. moving her mouth uh, it can really throw off an audience so I, i i am very sensitive towards these things so i take care uh, as much as possible but also one more very big thing helps me is um, knowing the story of the song what is the situation uh, where is it set in is it set in the current uh, period or is it a you know it's in the 1970s a retro period or is it really like in the mughal era so like uh, that also sets a lot of uh, you know those tone tonality and the way i'm uh, even enunciating the pronunciation of the words and of course the uh, the it's a team work to be honest like the lyrics for that song will be of course set in say like for example baji ram mastani uh, the the song you're talking about divani mastani uh, which you're talking uh, mm-hmm. here we're listening so this is a song where there's a lot of urdu uh, words used so hindi has a lot of urdu and pure hindi words mixed so the languages are also very different and over the years and different uh, historical changes and influences our language has built like that so how what kind of language was used in that era how were they pronounced in that time what was the pronunciation so the urban lingo has changed but in the you know early 1800s it was different uh, so keeping these things also in mind helps a lot to set a tone of the song the sound and the film everything mm-hmm. put together so you have to become a part of the script not just be a singer at that moment you have to become a part of that story in that moment so i do even if somebody doesn't tell me what is the backdrop of the song i will do my i'll prod i'll say what is the script <laughs> what is the Oh, what is the story where is she, why is she singing this song and in what time of the uh, storytelling or narration does this song appear what is her mental state in that point of time you know mm-hmm. is she going through if it's a current scene if is she going through a break up is she going through a certain um, crisis in 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 her time in a personal crisis all these things may be very uh, sound very uh, silly but they really make a lot of difference and i i put these small notes in my head then i don't think about it. i try to get into the mood and just sing it <laughs> that's awesome beautiful and so you've sang i believe it's thousands of songs uh which is mind boggling um but we've also heard these legendary artists like yusudas and and lada and that have sang like 30 to 50,000 songs in their life how does one like are you just constantly singing like all the time like what is what is your daily life that we're it's like <laughs> two to five songs a day that you're recording pre pandemic is how do you get to that number <laughs> <laughs> interesting no how do you get to the number that's uh, <laughs> so that's not really the intention here to yeah. get to that number <laughs> I think it just happens. <laughs> See, India is a big population. We have yeah. a lot of films happening. There is so much music and so many people to entertain in different languages and different styles of movies. Uh and then of course now independent music has also now started coming up so parallelly that. So then this number will happen no if you're singing for so many years. <laughs> this will add up. It's just it's uh, a lot. Uh, I think uh I think I think uh, I have had days when I have some fights I've recorded five songs uh, you know and you know hopped from studio to studio to get to one project to the other uh, very different kind of songs very different kind of composers and people I'm working with uh, even languages mm-hmm. uh, but I I now I'm I'm I don't do that because uh, I need to enjoy the process it's yes. not just about the number <laughs> Mm-hmm. I need to yeah. be in the song and if I'm not feeling it even the day if I've gone to the studio and I'm I'm feeling that okay I'm not in the right frame of mind or my vocals are not perfectly fired up to the 
today it needs a little bit of rest or something mm-hmm. i'll say no i'll come back tomorrow and i'll do it mm-hmm. <laughs> when i'm feeling up to the mark so I, i've taken it easy now mm-hmm. so i don't know how the numbers will get there <laughs> <laughs> they will <laughs> yeah they will they, right. <laughs> now you you started involved in music at a very young age yeah. and now i understand the way you became involved in Bollywood musicals is is it true that it was Sanjay Leela Bansali's mom who saw you on a contest and that that's how you got connected to Sanjay Leela Bansali which then led to Devdas yes wow you done yes? research <laughs> that's lovely Rick thank you and, yeah and so then um, you were critically huh. acclaimed like right out the gate you do Devdas and you're winning awards immediately and that's how it all started yes yeah it really yeah. Is, feels like a dream indeed mm-hmm. uh you know i was uh, so I, i my life has been very young in uh, in music um before devdas i was doing um, so when i i started singing in devdas i was 16 years old so uh, before that i was doing a lot of other kind of uh music which is non film some uh, marathi some bengali music so and before that i was doing television shows the the contests like we have uh, sare gama which is pretty much like you know the american idol or mm-hmm. indian idol you know that kind of a show as a reality show um uh, so that's that was the first television exposure and that was very new in our country anyway you know a, a show like this was first time conceived and uh, the script you know loved by people all about music and all the greats of the uh, musicians were on the panel judges panel uh, so at the age of say about 10 11 i i started doing these kind of those contests um and all of this was i i actually did not live in mumbai that time i was mm-hmm. in a different state called rajasthan mm-hmm. and i come from a very you know academic uh, family of engineers and you know mm-hmm. this kind of a family where music was just a, usually just a hobby can't mm-hmm. be nobody has ever thought of taking up a profession or a, make a career in music mm-hmm. but things happened you know in, thanks to my parents my dad his love for the art and he made sure that i learned from the best gurus and i uh, traveled from rajasthan to mumbai to participate in this contest and learn from different people once we moved here and then this show happened i sang a couple of times i was a kid but sanjay ji's mother was sitting somewhere in her living room and uh, uh, watching the show and she was very impressed or she uh you know she instantly told sanjay ji that please listen to her voice and that's how he first heard me and i had no idea that you know because film music i had not even planned in my life i was too young to know what to do in life to be honest i was doing my <laughs> uh, my school and a little bit of music whatever was happening uh, in, in very small uh, kind of work but Devdas was one of the most, uh, you know, awaited blockbuster mag- magnum opus kind of a film. Mm-hmm. People were waiting to see who's the star cast. Like finally, it was decided it'll be Shah Rukh Khan, Ashwarya Rai, and Madhuri Dixit. They are the hum- the you know biggest <laughs> names possible on uh, on a, in a in a movie. And uh, one day I get a call from Sanjay Ji uh, that uh, I am I heard your voice. and i want you to come wow uh so i want to hear you sing in front of you know all the musicians i thought it was a prank <laughs> <laughs> i bet <laughs> i honestly thought it was a prank and it was the most weirdest call ever because this was not expected at all without any preparation for it without any plan in life for a moment like this this happened so i really give it uh, all the credit goes to god because he has mm-hmm. plans for uh, everyone you know mm-hmm. so he did have a plan for me and i did this this song and of course the the two years of very you know challenging work on this film it was a very very big film it took two years for it to complete and when it released 
things completely changed for me yeah and uh, the awards are one of the things i feel very humbled by that but that's where my actual journey started of now i have to be very serious about music and i'm being compared or i'm being uh, you know people are calling me for some very big songs which are challenging to me uh, so i have to deliver i have mm-hmm. to learn i have to get there so now that's been almost 20 years <laughs> that's yeah. awesome that's fantastic um so I, I do have a question. Um, the actors often get famous dialogue just shouted at them on the street. Do you get sung at? <laughs> <laughs> like, do people I, do, do know, people just sing at you? <laughs> listen, so, uh, Corbin, so I, I was um, in school, right, when Dave Does Happen. And uh, that was the first song which I did, Berry Fear. And you know how... Uh, just right out outside the school there was a school wall where these uh, rather rowdy boys used to sit and just you know is the girls mm-hmm. you know it's it's a typical school thing and so whenever i would walk past because my film had just released i would be teased by this song and i used to get so upset at the same time i used to feel happy they know this song yeah good <laughs> it's a popular song <laughs> so yeah. that was that song very cool my first song <laughs> That's okay, awesome. so I, I got to I got to I got to know how did June 26th become Shreya Goshal Day in Ohio in the United States? <laughs> yeah, it was such a Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's become such a big thing and I feel very embarrassed to be honest. Uh at the same time I feel very uh, uh you know flattered, very happy. Um so this was when I had gone for a performance in ohio and we had you know i keep coming to the us and perform for all our uh, indian community uh, you know so there are a lot of performance in one of the uh, tours i was in ohio singing for for a room full of people and this, the governor of that state comes and gives me the surprise and uh, gives me the certificate and announces a day on my name I did not know what to say at that moment. Uh, <laughs> I feel I feel definitely very honored and I feel it's not just an honor for me it's an honor for the entire Indian diaspora which is living in the US and um that kind of respect and love that has been shared I feel uh, very happy that this is not just for me but it's for my culture and uh, I hope that I live up to the expectations here and uh, do good job because it's a it's a big thing yeah. and I don't know the f- the fans just make a big deal out of it and they celebrated it like Diwali or Christmas you know, <laughs> <laughs> on that day <laughs> so awesome. I so I also have to celebrate it because that day I feel key should I be cutting a cake what should yes. I be doing that yeah, day you should be doing 100%, something absolutely 100% yeah Uh and I know I know you haven't committed to anything obviously yet but can we expect an acting debut here soon? No. no. <laughs> I thought I heard so- I thought I know I know you've said you've gotten a lot of offers. I didn't know if you were eventually one day going to like do OTT no. or anything like that. Yeah. So now these kind of opportunities have come up. So I see I never say no like a blanket no, but uh I I don't feel the urge to do it. I mean, mm. I would rather do my music video. That's fine. If I have to do it for my song, I will do it. It's very awkward, you know, <laughs> for me to be in front of a camera and I see all these actors just crying at the uh you know, whenever you need it you just get into that mood and start emoting i said i cannot do this i don't have it in i can do it with my voice but i don't yeah. know if i can do it with my face or my body language it's a very difficult art we we just tend to become like becoming an actress is becoming a glam fashion thing that's what many people think in india mm-hmm. like uh, but i i i i I don't take it lightly. If I were to do something, I'd rather go to school, learn how to act, and then do it. And I yeah. don't think I can commit to. <laughs> Now, on a, on a lighter note, I heard somewhere that you like to cook. Yeah. Do you have a favorite you know, thing? You know, 
I I cook, but I can't. Uh, uh, many a times uh, when I have say for for example, if I've committed someone, ki okay, I'll you know I'll cook this for you and I'll you know uh, you will get to eat something. So and then that day only I'll mess up. So <laughs> I'm not very consistent. <laughs> a consistent. Just like Corbin. On, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Corbin, you can relate to it, right? No, no. So, I, uh, I I cook on no? a di- on a different channel. I've tried to make some Indian dishes. I I'm oh, not do? a cook like at in the slightest. Uh, I've I can cook mac and cheese sometimes. Um, so it's just I try to make for the first time Indian dishes, and we'll see mm-hmm. what happens. And so that's that's basically. So I should also so inspired by you, I'll also come up with a channel then. Do it. Uh, you should. <laughs> but i'm just kidding uh, so this lockdown gave me a lot of time to be in the kitchen cuz what else to do and of course uh, uh, we were all very active on social media everybody was posting recipes and how to make banana bread and you know that was a fad at that first lockdown period everyone was posting uh, their cooking skills on on their instagram or etc so i said okay i'll also do so one or two posts i did and then i got bored uh but uh <laughs> i think I, i i think i think i can cook a little better now because with some practice it it has this lockdown has been actually a blessing in mm. uh, many ways for me um uh, i could do a lot of small things which gave me a lot of joy also mm. so uh, i think now next time when you're in india i can cook for you And I have be gotten fantastic. better. Fantastic! <laughs> you'll have to. Absolutely. Uh, you'll have to tell uh, Rick what to make his Bengali girlfriend uh, for Valentine's Day. Yes, any any <laughs> Bengali dish. Oh yes. Okay, now so in this lockdown, I have learned a lot of recipes from my mom. I will totally uh, cook for you and your girlfriend, and uh, I hope you like it. Yeah. I have a lot of nice recipes now. <laughs> that's that's yes. why he's. Uh, That's why he's learning Bengali. Uh, so it's I just want to get it. I just want to uh, finish this off and thank you so much for for chatting with us so with a little bit of a rapid fire, just a couple of random questions uh, here. So just uh, coffee or chai? Hmm. It's seasonal. I would say coffee, but in winters I like chai. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Favorite Bengali dish? Kosha mangsho. Kosha mangsho. Do you know that, Rick? Oh yes, I do, and I agree you do? with you. He does not. He's yes. lying. <laughs> <laughs> If you can cook that for your girlfriend, I am not. Be... You should. You, I, I've, I've had food in Calcutta. I promise you, the favorite food that I've had thus far is the stuff that I've eaten in Calcutta, 100%. Mm. And I'm not just being biased; it's just truth. Uh, oh, okay. Fav- favorite. <laughs> I like it. Favorite Bengali word. Just a word. Mm. Just, just the word. Um. Um. Ami, see, that everyone is. I I think I like the word garom. Garom, garom. means hot. Garom. Mm. Garom. 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 Like in the sense, you know, usually Calcutta is so humid uh, that everyone will just say garom lach. I'm feeling very hot. So I I think it's one of the most common phrases used in in garom. Calcutta. If you go garom. garom. <laughs> I'll start yeah. using that one. Uh, favorite, <laughs> favorite Hollywood film. Mm. Oh God! Wow, I didn't expect you would ask me these kind of questions. <laughs> I would have done some preparation. <laughs> okay. Um, a beautiful mind. Mm. Um, yeah, wonderful film. Sound of Music. Oh, come on, Sound yes. of Music. Julie Andrews. Hey, I saw you do I saw you do that bit in my uh, Angana More review. It was hilarious how you started with that song and I cannot believe it Corbin you don't know that song. Oh. I know. Let, my my wife the minute somebody says let's start at the very beginning it should be immediate everybody. That- <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. It was very heartbreaking to see that. My <laughs> wife was very upset as well. Uh favorite Indian film any region. Uh, okay, uh I 
I think there's a movie called Jab We Met. Yep. And I've seen it. I watch it. I watch it over and over again because I don't know. There's something very cute and very sweet yep. about that movie. Little yeah, Shahid I Kapoor. I love Little Shahid, Shahid Kapoor. Shahid Kapoor and yeah. Shahid. Oh, Shahid. Shahid Kapoor. What did I say? <laughs> did I, did I do it? Again? Oh, <laughs> did I do it? What? I did that at the beginning of the channel. I don't know why I'm doing. It. Okay. All right. Well. <laughs> uh, favorite Indian. Shahid, so Shahid means honey. <laughs> So oh. he said Shahid Kapoor. Well, he does feel that way about him. That's true. He, he is my best friend. Uh, no, uh, favorite Indian actor and actress? Mm. Okay. Actor. So, okay. Can I be... Okay. In the very... Um, these are all black and white movies, Amana. Okay. Like the old films. I yeah. really like... Gurudat movies are just yes. and Vahida Ram. These two people are my ultimate. You know, romance uh, is best uh, expressed on screen for me uh, by these two actors. Yeah, we 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 just watched Payasa actually, like uh, mm -hmm. last you week. Did. Yeah, phenomenal film. Uh, and yeah. uh, favorite uh, Indian? Uh, did you say actress? Yeah, I did say Vahida Raman, but there are so many more. I I really like Madhubala. I uh, in the uh, in the recent times, I like right, not so recent, but Ma Madhuri Dixit is, is one of my very favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, she's absolutely gorgeous, and she yeah. especially for my music, I feel she, I, she's the ultimate face I want to sing for. I've sung, <laughs> but I want to sing for her. <laughs> And last but not least, what is, in your opinion, your best work? It's yet to come. Yes. <laughs> Good answer. I like it. I like it. Well, well thank you so much for uh, chatting with us. We really appreciate it. We are, once again, massive admirers of your talent. Um, we, we think you are uh, literally the, one of those unique voices. That's why I call you the muscular dove um, <laughs> that I've ever heard. And um, we, we we just, every single time we hear one of your, your songs or s hear your voice in a film, it's just s w one of the highlights of uh, any anything we watch or, or, or stuff like that. So thank you so much for sharing your talent and sitting down and talking with us, Rick. Yeah, uh, and we we everything we've heard you sing, obviously we've been impressed by the quality of your voice and what your capacity is. Your training is evident in the way that you sing, but more more specifically, the expression and the artist that you are. And talking to you today was really revealing and celebratory for us because that's the thing that matters to us most is highlighting and accentuating, elevating artistry, and just the way you described how you go about phrasing things in such a way and the detail that you go into taking your notes and making sure that you're finding the emotional expressiveness and understanding the backstory of the script. Uh, we, we just wish nothing but the best for you because in our minds, you are the definitive consummate artist. Not just, a, you're not just a singer. You are a, a complete artist and we look forward to everything else you're gonna be doing next so we can listen to your, your dove muscularity. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. That was so. I am very emotional with all of that you said, but you always end it with the laughter. So thank you for, you know, those wonderful things that you do on your channel. And uh, I'm so glad we did this interview. And uh, I hope I'll come back again and talk to you. There's so much more to talk about. Absolutely. About oh, so much more. I'm looking, yeah. I'm looking. <laughs> looking forward to that Bengali dish whenever we come uh, come back to India. You must come soon and I'll cook for you. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Have you. A, you have a great Thank day, okay? You. Thank you.